So what we have here is a PLSQL oriented project in JDeveloper. We have a database design and we have a PLSQL function that we're going to use. And what we're going to do is manage this project, the full development lifecycle, using the developer cloud service. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new developer cloud service project. We'll give it a name and a description. And then we're going to skip the template step and just choose a specific markup language for our wiki and click Finish. This generates a complete development platform for our project, including version management using Git, um, issue tracking system, code review system, build environment, wiki, and more. Once all the services are provisioned for us, we'll be taken into the homepage for our new project. Over here, we can start adding more members to our team. So let's add a couple of members. We'll add Alex, the admin. And we'll click to also add Clara, who is a coder in our project. So all of those people are now able to access this project. And we're going to copy this URL for our Git repository and switch back into JDeveloper. Let's version manage our application using Git. So we're going to initialize a local Git repository. And then we're going to add into this repository all the files from our project. And we're also going to commit this transaction with a comment saying that this is the initial database design. And now that we version it locally, we can push the changes into our main repository in the cloud. So we're going to paste the Git repository URL over here, provide a username and a password that will allow us to connect to that Git repository. And we're going to create a master branch up there in the cloud. You can see the Git progress on the right side at the bottom. And now that all the files have been pushed to the server, we can switch back to the web interface, click the home button, and we can see our transaction appearing in the activity stream. And if we go into the code tab, we can see our complete project over here with all the files, as well as the various directories. For example, here's our diagram for the database design. Great, so the next thing is to start tracking the issues and to-do items that we need to do in the project. So we're going to create a new issue, and this can be a requirement, a bug, or anything else that you want to track. So we're going to track a specific task, which is called the update salary procedure task. And we're going to have it assigned to someone. We're setting things like the severity, the priority, due date, and we can assign multiple other properties. And this specific task is going to be assigned to me. So we're going to also give a description for this task and pointing people to the design doc. So now that we created uh, our first task, let's create another issue. Okay, And this one would be the need to create a new build uh, system or a procedure. And again, we don't have to fill out all the um, fields here. We can just choose the ones we want. And uh, this one would be assigned to Clara. So let's click the Create Issue. As a developer, you can go into the Issue tab, and you can look, for example, at all the issues that are assigned to me, or all the open issues, or all the issues, uh, various queries that you can do on top of the issue tracking system. So now we're going to actually go and um, add a wiki page, and a wiki page, for example, can host our design documents. So again, it's very easy from the web interface. Go in there and just type whatever you want, whatever text you want, and you can also have a associated attachment to this. Um, and just click Save to save your page um, and the new wiki page that you've just created. So here's our wiki home with our new page in it. Okay, so we have our design doc, we have our tasks. So 
let's actually go and start working on our project. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check out the current version of the code and create a new branch for it. So this will be a branch where we're going to fix this, the salary procedure. So we checked it out, we have a new branch here, and we can now go into the source code and start doing a couple of modification. We'll change here to 20 and here to 101. Save everything. Um, next, we're going to actually generate a new SQL um, file that actually creates this procedure. Okay, so that's the name of the file. We're going to place it at the top directory just so it would be easier to find for us. And this is how you generate a SQL file for creating the function in the database. Similarly, we can create a separate SQL file, for example, to generate the tables. So we're going to name this one tables and we're going to pick up the two tables from our database design. And again, we can specify a lot of uh, options in those results. For example, we want to replace existing tables. Click finish and here's our second SQL file. Uh, those two files are now candidates to be added to our repository. So let's add those two files to our Git repository. Next, I'm going to also create a new build file. So a build file will allow me to do all sorts of operation. For example, after I check in code into our repository, I'm using ant here. So this is an ant build file. And I'm going to copy some text from an external source and you can then copy it from my blog entry. And this specifically is a sample um, task or target in ant that uses uh, the SQL task to actually run a SQL script in a database. So we can specify the JDBC driver and the name of the file and of course a connection and we'll call our target the deploy target. Targets can do other things. They can, for example, zip files or they can copy files to other location and many other operations. This is a way for you to automate activities in your project. So again, we just have one target called deploy, and we're going to add those two files into our Git repository and make sure that any other files that have changed are also added to this transaction. And then we're going to commit all the files together. So this would be a new transaction into our version management called fixed salary and started work on the build. That's our comment here. And let's push this up to the cloud. Again, using the same wizard we used before. This time we're going to push it into a new branch that we're going to create in the cloud, the fixed sal branch. Once the changes have been pushed to the server, we can switch back to the browser view. And um, if we look right now at the home, we can see the new transactions that just been added in our activity stream. And what we're going to do next is define a merge request. A merge request is basically a code review request. And we're going to ask someone to review our changes to the salary function. So once this is done, we're going to be able to merge um, the changes from the fixed cell branch into the master and we're asking Alex admin to look at our code. So this is our code review request actually, or merge request. And now we're going to switch to another browser and in this browser we're going to log in as Alex the admin and he's going to refresh the list of projects he has access to. And here's the DB design project we just created. So he can go into this project, can see the activity stream with all the activities that the other user did, and go into the merge request tab where he can see the merge requests that were assigned to him. So when he clicks on one of those requests, he can go and see a conversation on the topic. Okay, and he can uh, go and see which commits are related to this request. And uh, he can actually go and see the actual files that were changed. So for example, we can see here the code from our PLSQL function. And he can go in and add comments directly in the code. For example, he sees that this 
line has changed and maybe he has a comment on the way that this was implemented. So this is basically adding a code review and now he can publish the specific comment that he wrote. Okay, so this was Alex working and doing the code review and now we're going to go back into the view that I have, the guy who actually requested the review. And I can see again in my activity stream that Alex did some activity and put in a comment. And when I go into the files, I can see his comment embedded inside my source code. I'm going to ignore the comment and merge my code into the main branch in any case. Again, very easy to do, I press of a button. And now we have the new files located here um, ready for usage. So now let's go and define a new build process. And again, we're going to define a build that would actually go and run some SQL scripts in our case. We call it SQL build. And we can define various properties for the build. Um, one aspect is that we're relying on a source code repository. So if you don't have the URL to the source code, you can just go over here and copy it. And go back here and let's modify our build script. So we're configuring it to actually access our Git repository and pick up files from there. And then we're going to add a specific build step that again can be just a shell command, a Maven command or an end command. We're using an end script and we're going to invoke the deploy target from our build.xml file. So we're saving this. And we are now ready to build our project. Click build. This queues up our build process using Hudson executors to execute it. Um, it's going to take a couple of minutes for the Hudson executor to execute it. So we're going to cut the video. And when we're back, we can see that it's starting to execute now. And you can see the progress as it happens live in your web dashboard. Our build is actually going to fail because we didn't actually specify a connection to a real database that is accessible from the cloud. We just simulated something. So we can actually see the failure indication here. And it's very easy to go into the console and look at the log file and see exactly why it failed. It's basically because we specified an invalid host. So that's a quick demo of development for PLSQL with the developer cloud service.